In this video, I attempt to enter Europe's largest supermarket, La Cañada Real in Madrid, Spain. Do a quick Google search on this place and you only see Spanish news reports about trafficking and police raids, addiction and overdoses, arms trafficking and living conditions that should never exist in the European Union. Historically speaking, it was a narrow strip of land that was created by passing cattle farmers and herders where little by little people started settling here. But behind the horrible reputation is a barrio that has faced injustices and is completely misunderstood. It's a place full of hardworking families, modest immigrants, and people who have lived their entire lives there under the shadow of these negative reports. My goal on this channel is to show you the reality of wherever I go. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Nothing more, nothing less. This is part one of a two-part series where I try to enter this no-go zone alone with a camera. So join me on an adventure to try and understand this strange place that few outsiders know exists. It can be extremely dangerous. Enter with a camera. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I problem. 12,000 doses of f***ing daily. So smoking crack. Yeah, I smoke crack. No les gusta que se metan en sus territorios. Hey, balas. Holy f Some four years ago when I arrived to Spain, I was looking for work and so one of the things I did was teach private English classes. And I had a young 16 year old student and I asked him out of curiosity, what's the most dangerous neighborhood in the whole of Spain? Not realizing that there actually were dangerous neighborhoods. He responded, La Cañada Real. And that's exactly where we find ourselves today in the outskirts of the sprawling metropolis of Madrid next to the suburb city of Rivas Vacia, Madrid. Now we're basically in no man's land here because on one side we have a massive motorway, basically nothing, undeveloped land. And on this side, we have a long 16 kilometer stretch of shanty towns. The further you go that way, the nicer it is. The further you go that way, the more dangerous and dodgy it is. And one of the goals I've had on this channel is to always show the reality that tourists never knew existed in the country of Spain. And believe it or not, behind the facade of Madrid and Spain being one of the safest places in the world, which it is, there is a dark underbelly that many people don't talk about and only Spaniards really know about this alternate reality that we have here. All right, we gotta get down this mountain and start walking through the neighborhoods because there's a lot of interesting things to see. Hola. Eh, nada, estoy, estoy caminando por eh, sector 5, sector 4. Me llamo Elliot, yo soy un guiri. Me llamo Elliot, estoy haciendo un reportaje para YouTube. Y yo vi tu papá. ¿Cómo te llamas? Pedro. Pe ¿Pedro? Sí. Eh, Pedro, esto es sector 4, ¿no? Sí. ¿Y qué tal aquí? Muy bien, muy tranquilo. Muy tranquilo, sí. Eso es lo que he visto. Que aquí hay un estigma que la cañada es muy peligrosa, pero aquí la gente vive muy en paz. En paz, tranquilo. Sí. Nosotros somos trabajadores, gente currante. Sí. ¿En qué estás trabajando? Los palés. ¿Palés? Eh, estás subiendo palés, ¿no? ¿Puedo hablar con tu familia, quizá? Vamos a acercar, es que ya, ya me vieron, ya me vieron. No sé, tengo que preguntarle. Vamos a preguntarle y, y yo lo grabo. Espérate. Okay. All right, his family doesn't want to be on camera, which is fine. Actually, he said, Giri, because they actually know me in Spain. They call me Giri, right? Foreigner. They said, if you want us to be on the video, you got to pay us 20 bucks. Basically joking, but yeah, if they don't want to be on camera, that's fine. But it's proven that sector six, the most dangerous area, probably one of the most dangerous areas in all of Europe, is basically one of the biggest supermarkets of drugs in all of Europe, definitely in Spain. I've read online that sometimes they sell up to 12,000 doses every single day, which is just absurd to think about. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about predominantly maybe has arrived, but I'm not sure. If it is, it's gonna be a disaster. We're talking about and we're talking about massive plantations of clandestine grow houses. As you see, when we talk to people, not all of them work with drugs. Now let me explain. This neighborhood has six different sectors and it extends some 16 kilometers through more than one municipality. A lot of it is what some would say is no man's land, meaning basically these houses aren't even recognized. They're not recognized by the city or town halls. Therefore, some people don't even own the places. When you start in sector one, you'll see lots of normal houses, nice places actually. And you'll see as the sectors go on, things get a little bit worse. I've been to a lot of places. And this isn't anything strange or new for me. In 
so you have a lot of these tallerines, which are workshops, cañada real, a mechanic, electricians. And I think right here along the city, it's paved. We have people coming and going to work. Kids are playing, but it definitely looks a lot dodgier than where we started the video in Rivas Vacia. So what we have here are some nice new cookie cutter houses in the suburb of Rivas Vacia, Madrid. Speaking of which, our good friend Stuart from Spain Speaks lives in these parts. I'm not exactly sure where, so shout out to Stuart. And uh, he helped me prepare mentally for this video, gave me a lot of good information and advice. But I do have to say that I like this little community here. We have lots of people walking their dogs. Very safe place to be. Now we have to talk about demographic. This 16 mile stretch of what basically are illegal settlements dating back to the 70s and 80s, post Franco era, the transition to democracy, etc., is composed mostly of displaced gypsies, Spanish gypsies, Romanian gypsies, and people coming from North Africa, the Maghreb region, predominantly Moroccan immigrants. And so when they get to Spain, it's not easy to immigrate. They really have nowhere to live if you don't have a job, if you don't have income, if you don't have papers. Where the heck are you gonna live? And so we'll see many people living in this area with those origins. And I'm no stranger to gypsy villages. I've made plenty of videos in gypsy neighborhoods. They're not actually that dangerous. There are plenty of good people as you've seen in previous videos. The gypsy settlement I went to in the outskirts of Malaga, that was a great time and I'm always welcome there basically. But years previous, those people carried a heavy stigma and still to some regards carry that stigma just like the people here in La Cañada Real. Because if you say, oh, I live in La Cañada Real, regardless of how much money you make, regardless of your education, among Madrileños, people living in Madrid, you're gonna carry that stigma. And so there's cases of kids who wanna celebrate their birthday. You know, they go to school here, they wanna invite their classmates, and the parents say, nope, we're not going to there, because that's dodgy. This one says here, El Sol me miró, the sun looked at me. So this is basically also been dubbed as the Franja de Gaza Madrileño. What does that mean? It's basically the Gaza Strip of Madrid, meaning that people here have had shortages of food, shortages of electricity. The lights have been cut, the electricity has been cut for some four years because of disputes with the neighboring town halls and the electrical bills, etc. So another reason that they cut out the electricity is because in the most dangerous sector, the sector that if we're lucky enough, we'll get into today, sector six, that's a huge area for operating grow houses, massive marijuana grow houses, where over the years, there's been tons of police raids and there's been tons of drug seizures, tons of kilos, thousands of kilos of seized, thousands of kilos of heroin, of cocaine, etc. So that is the hot spot. And that's basically what gives this whole area, this 16 mile stretch, a bad rap. Buenas tardes, señores. No, 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 estoy aquí conociendo el sector 4 y 5 que vengo de Estados Unidos. Sí, ahí voy, pero bueno, señor, gracias. ¿Cómo se vive aquí? Tranquilito, bien? Vale, gracias. Very friendly people there, hey? But basically, you do have great families that live here, hardworking people who find work anywhere they can. Perhaps they commute to the nearby cities, and that's what causes problems, is those people are very upset of the tarnished reputation they have, because here in this part, wow, check this out, Asociación Cultural Islamica, Aramha. Right, so just as I researched, we are in a predominantly Moroccan area, I'm assuming. One of the reasons they cut the electricity, of, of course, is the grow houses, but it's because little by little, what they wanna do is they wanna tear down some of these shanty towns. And of course, that's for new real estate projects that Madrid is working on, because the more people that wanna to move to Madrid, a phenomenon we've been seeing throughout my videos and throughout the recent history of Spain, more people moving here, digital nomads, people from the countryside, well, they gotta live somewhere. And of course, Airbnbs, they're displacing all the people who once lived in the center. People keep moving out, gentrification happens. And while these people, a lot of them were already gentrified, right? Because some of these people live near the city center of Madrid in the 20th century. They displaced them and put them here. But once again, they're trying to squeeze them out little by little. Because as we know, money controls everything and drugs. All right, check this out. Soy Moreno, I'm brown or I'm black. Interesting. Como esta? 
Bien, bien. bien. Sí, sí, sí. Alhamdulillah. Uh, ¿Cómo te llamas? Ayú. Do you speak English? Yes. Yeah, you speak English. Yes, yes. What is it like to live in La Cañada as Moroccan man? Mm, it is, uh, I see it uh, like normal. So. Normal. Very yeah. relaxed, very chill, safe. Yes, yes. There is no problem. Mm -hmm. at, at least in this part. Then on the extreme parts, there usually could be a problem. Uh -huh. But here, there is no problem. Awesome. So do you live with mostly Moroccan people or gypsies or who do you who lives in this area? Uh, we, uh, here lives uh, a little Spanish men, uh -huh. then Moroccan and also gitanos. Gypsies, gitanos. Yes. And so you guys live together, everybody in peace and harmony. Uh, uh, we are usually group in several parts. Uh -huh. Here lives uh, mostly Moroccans. Uh -huh. Then lo, uh, the every ethnic uh, group group lives uh, together. Sure, sure, sure. Underst I understand. Yes. And so, is this a mosque here, or is yes. just a place? There is a mosque. There's mosque. Yes. Awesome. Where do people normally work? How do they make money here in this sector? Uh, most of us has papers here. There is no a lot of people without papers. Okay. So we can work but with uh, works that don't require a lot of study. Oh, okay, so yes. low low study jobs, yes. so basic jobs. Because uh, most of uh, the adults men don't, don't have study, they come here without uh, any study. So sure. they yeah. work in whatever, whatever, whatever they can. can. Yes. Hey, your English is very good, brother. I appreciate yes. it. I Inshallah. study in a uh, bilingual school. Uh, school so. And Rivas? Yes, in Rivas. In okay, so you had English teacher like me. Yes, yes. Ah, very good. I'm very, so I'm very Muslim. happy. Yeah, I'm very happy to hear that. And uh, you are from Morocco, uh, or? I, I, I was born here. Oh, guys, this sucks. I'm just getting drenched. But you know what? If I'm actually gonna know the reality that people live in these places, this is a good example. Because when they cut the electricity, people have actually frozen to death. Babies have frozen to death here, especially when that massive snowstorm hit a couple years back. I actually made a video about it. It was called Borrasco Filomena. My God, here we are in a rainstorm. This sucks. What am I doing with my life, guys? And uh, you can see a lot of people work in what's called chatarra or scrap metal. So they get all the scrap metal and of course they sell it to make a living. Hola, buenos dias. Como esta? Bien. Bien. Okay. This is probably this is probably someone's house, but I have no choice. So let's check out a Chinese shop. Wow, look at this. My God, they have everything. Hola, hay hay paraguas. Sí. Vale. Hay son pequeñas, hay grandotes. Vale. Oh, it's, good. It's huge downstairs. Okay. Yeah, it's like to the left. All right. Are you from Rivas? <laughs> yes. How is nice city, huh? I like the city. Yeah. Well, it, it grew up a lot. It, it's grown it, a it lot. Was, yeah. It was a small town. Yeah. And now it's quite big. For a moment, it was the, the European city that grew the most. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Or Spanish or European? E European. Like maybe in the 90s, like the most growth. Okay. The, the most rapid That's what growth. I heard. Like the, the houses that you can see behind here. Sure, sure, sure. They are established now. Yeah. They are recon reconocido. They're recognized. Yes. yes, yes. Okay. They're recognized and now it's settled up. They are not uh, allowing more buildings. I just walked through mm -hmm. sector four and five and it was very nice. Like right behind here. Yeah, it was, uh, nice yes. people, nice people. Yes, yes, I, I used to take a walk over there too, because when we were little, it was more like isolated, you know, never, we were like a few, few hundred meters away from them, yeah. but people wouldn't, you know, cross paths. But sure. I think it's good. Yeah, it's know? good. And the houses are really nice. Too. Yeah. I, I guess Some I of would them. like that in the future will be like the uh, Pinterest, part of the town. You know? like <laughs> how, it, it could be, how ironic, it could be right? Cool, how know? ironic. Gracias. De nada, a ti. <laughs> Adios. Hasta luego. So these Chinese bazaars are just, yeah, they're so useful. <laughs> you know, one thing I've learned about when you make videos like this and you just go on adventures, you just kind of never know what you're going to encounter. And that's kind of the fun part about making YouTube videos is it gives you an excuse to just Go to places you would absolutely never visit if you were a tourist 
And that's one of the reasons I make this video is because millions of tourists come to Spain every year and they literally have no idea about the real living conditions of some places in Andalusia, in Madrid, in Barcelona. I mean, it's totally another world. And as a tourist, you're never gonna actually be in danger when you come to these places. There's no reason for you to come here unless you're buying drugs, to be honest, or you're doing a YouTube video. <laughs> This is the part where I'm starting to get really nervous because under this highway here is where hell on earth starts. <sighs> There's only been a few videos in this place, both of them in Spanish and, and one of them, an Italian guy, the fear that he transmitted in the video was something that, yeah, scared the shit out of me to be honest. You can see it's really hard to access this place and why it's a perfect place to control trades because it's basically isolated crime. The police know exactly where the drugs are. Therefore, there's not really problems with innocent people coming to get drugs or getting robbed like if they were in the center. And I gotta be careful about who sees me recording because if a car comes that knows, you know, I'm an outsider, they could warn people in the barrio that I'm coming and there could be problems, but this is basically the last frontier, if you will, before you enter hell on earth. You can just see how things are changing just like that. But we do have some industrial areas over here, some distribution centers or whatnot, trucks going in and out. So maybe I'll find someone that can guide me in the right direction. Wow. That's the first needle I've seen, oh my God. I've never seen a needle like that in the street. So you guys, just by the nature of this content, here's some more. By the nature of this content, oh my God. This video is definitely gonna get demonetized. Jesus Christ. Hola. Cigarro no tengo. Hay la parroquia? La parroquia? Vale. Hasta luego. This is not good. I am not comfortable here. Because I don't know what the cars that are passing by. The trucks are obvious, they're working. But I have no idea who's in the cars, what they're doing, if they're... If they're consumers, if they're just normal people. That's what makes it scary. ¿Cómo llego a la parroquia? La, la parroquia para allá? Vale. Gracias, gracias. Buenos días. No, perdón, no tengo. It's hard to see the condition of these people, but it's pretty shocking. There's actually danger of the junkies here, you know, wanting their fix and robbing you at knife point or with a needle even. There's a cafe here. Let's check this out. Buenos días. Yo me llamo Elliot. Yo soy de Estados Unidos. ¿Os interesa salir en un documental no, para...? No. no. Vale, gracias. Hasta luego. ¿Ya estás grabando? No, no, no. No estoy grabando. Vale, vale. Por eso os pide permiso hey. primero. Well, I just saw an EMT there. Ambulance worker. Hola, buenas. The people here are sick of the cameras because so many TV stations from Spain have came here just to record content of or news programs of raids and so they're tired of that obviously it's not a typical gypsy neighborhood this is just a whole different world you guys as you can tell and I have to be very careful where I step because I don't want to step on a needle all right there's a lot of people up there so I might just put my camera in the bag so I got the camera in my bag right now just the lens showing this is where one of the scarier walks of my life began. It's virtually impossible to film in a place like this. Many cars you see passing here were customers, dealers, and addicts from all walks of life. And the further you get into the barrio, the harder it is to leave, especially if you get caught filming. I decided it was a better idea to hide my camera, but if I got caught with the hidden camera, I feel that's worse than being transparent. It's extremely hard to predict the behavior of someone who suffers from drug addiction. People here were not friendly. They aren't like the hoods that I filmed in Andalusia or Bulgaria. 
area. If you interfere with business, you're a huge problem. This is truly the only place in Spain where I felt this type of tension. And it might seem like I'm exaggerating for the video, but this is truly how I felt in the moment. Hola, hermano. Habrá problemas si yo paso dando una vuelta? Depende qué estás haciendo. Eh, un reportaje para Estados Unidos, pero soy youtuber americano. Si sí, no quiero buscar drogas ni nada. Pues, Solo ver la, la parroquia y volver. Sí. No hay problema. Ten cuidado, sí. Si pasa por ahí. Si no subes solo, tú no preguntes nada a nadie y tira. Porque hay problemas. Pero... Vale. Pero, pero, por ejemplo, hay una salida para caminar por el campo y escapar si es necesario. Sí, claro, sí, sí, sí. Vale. Venga. Pero... So that guy seemed to be nice. I just think, yeah, maybe he was working. Not exactly sure in what. He just said, be careful. Yeah, he looks like he's working. Hola. Yeah, you guys, this is so dodgy. I'm trying to figure out at which point to turn around. No, yo no tengo, bro. No, no, para que, para que ya no me lucra, tío. No, ya no tengo, yo no tengo nada, bro. Yo vengo a hablar con la cura. I've never felt so unsafe recording a video. Hola, señor. Eh, ¿Tú conoces la cura? El cura de la parroquia? Sí. sí ¿Está? ¿Estará no, hoy? Yo que no soy de aquí. ¿No? no. Vale. Hola. Policía, ¿no? no, no, yo ah, soy americano. Yo. ¿Y es posible pasar por el barrio o es muy peligroso? peligroso. A ver. Depende para qué. ¿Quieres grabar o algo? Sí. No. No, no se puede. No, no, porque te van a matar. Te mata. ¿En serio? Te sí. tiran piedra, te Pero coches. os puedo hacer una entrevista. A nosotros. Ah, ¿no? ah vale. <risa> porque es peligroso. Porque no les gusta que se metan en sus territorios, que vean las cosas que hacen. Entonces no les gusta que pisen sus terrenos. No. Aunque no sea para drogas. Es su zona y no. Ni la policía pasa del puente para allá. ¿eh? ¿Y por qué estáis aquí hoy? Porque tenemos familia aquí. Vale, ¿sois mestizas o gitanas? Sí, mestizas. Eres mestiza. Mitad gitana, mitad... Mitad, mitad, mitad paya. ¿Y usted? Paya. ¿Eres pura paya? Sí. sí. Con, Con este uno, chico que claro, aquí. no le señales. No le señales. De hecho, hemos discutido... Sí, bueno, Ten cuidado. Vale. <risa> Con ese en el autobús, porque quería hacerse el dueño de todo el autobús, y yo le he dicho, me dice, a mí no me das miedo, le digo, tú a mí tampoco me das miedo, tengo aquí a mi familia y si me tocas no vas a bajar del autobús, vamos, no te van a hacer nada. Eres una chica muy fuerte en la calle, ¿no? Tienes calle. Lo intento, sí, lo intento. ¿Qué problemas habéis visto aquí en este barrio? Uh, 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 de un montón, todo, un poco de, de todo. junkies peleándose, de un coche quemado, del helicóptero buscando sí, a gente. Sí, sí. Sí. Y a disparos limpios. ¿Y entonces crees que esto es como un lugar, el lugar más peligroso de sí, España? Probablemente el, el sí, primer sí. lugar de todo Madrid puede ser sí, que sí. No vale la pena arriesgar y no, entrar no, con, no, aún con ustedes, ¿no? No, no porque si te ven ya con la cámara... ¿Por qué hay coches. muchos coches? ¿Por qué? Porque vienen a visitar y luego se van. Sí, tienen cosas buenas, porque por ejemplo, si alguien no tiene comida y la vecina sí. tiene, pues hacen comida, se lo sí. llevan. Sí, si ven a alguien en la calle que conozcan, 
pues no le dejan dormir ahí en la calle tampoco. Sí. Por ejemplo, a mi hermano vivía conmigo en mi piso allí, en, en mi barrio, en Villaverde, y mi tío le dijo, oye, mira, tú te estás perdiendo allí porque estás haciendo cosas que no debes, vente aquí, te doy un trabajo de mecánico, tienes aquí tu casa y no fumas y no haces tonterías ni nada. Y aquí tienes su trabajo. Y... Hay gente que trabaja de verdad, solamente que tiene una mala reputación por las redes y... Y, y por noticias. La, a ver, es que hay gente y gente en todos lados. Hay gente aquí buena y gente no tan buena. ¿Qué es el mayor sueño de... Yo, ¿Qué, qué no queréis hacer aquí. de mayor? Pues... <risa> pues yo quisiera conseguir un buen trabajo para poder sacar a mi hijo otra vez conmigo. ¿Tienes un hijo? ¿Cuántos años tiene él? Siete. Siete. Y cuando lo tuve estaba en situación de centros de menores. Sí. Y pues no podía tenerlo conmigo, porque como era menor yo, sí. pues no podía tener otro menor. ¿A qué edad tuviste tu hijo? A los 16. A los 16, entonces ahora tienes a los 23. 15, sí, a los 15, pero me faltaban tres meses para los 16. Wow. Y bueno, chicas, muchas gracias. Nada. Yo voy a escuchar tus consejos de no entrar a menos vale. que... Vale, porque tienes pinta de policía, pero eso no, no cae bien tampoco. Ah, vale. I just have a gut instinct not to risk it in this one. I got a little bit further down and I saw a group of six or seven men standing outside of a house where cars were coming and going and basically those girls said that every car that passes is either a secret police or a junkie coming to pick up their doses. And there's absolutely no reason to even try to talk to those guys because we all know what goes on um, and it's not worth getting everything stolen or getting hurt and I don't even have to show that to convey my point of what I've just seen. You could see the girls. Younger girls, one had a kid, obviously in conditions where they probably consumed, have been consuming and Here we have some guys up here that, I'm gonna put the camera away. It was actually quite impactful just to see those girls. Like you can see that the street turns people into a, to tough, to tough individuals. So yeah, these cars could be guys that just picked up their doses. Here's another one. 12,000 doses of daily and I don't doubt it because we have syringes all around here check it out Oof. luckily I found an uber I got out of that place and I tried convincing the uber to bring me deeper into the neighborhood he said no and the taxi uber driver said yeah the application won't let me enter that area uh, I'll get in trouble from my boss it's so dangerous there's cases of taxi drivers having rocks thrown at them, uh, police having rocks thrown at them. So it was an interesting experience. It's not a place you can go alone. So maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get a contact and I'll be able to return and make a more in-depth video of that particular section. So I hope you guys learned something from that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, what people, what these other YouTubers are showing of Spain isn't always the reality. A lot of people sell, you know, an ideal, something that, quite honestly, something that is glamorized, making Spain seem like a utopia, what you many regards it is, but the country is far from perfect, and there are places that you never imagined existed, and that's what we're gonna be showing on this channel. So, I'll see you on the next video from somewhere else in Spain. Take care, everybody. Good night. My name is Harris. I'm from Romania, but I'm, my name is from America. There's no light, no electricity. These are serious circumstances that people here face. Tiros, balas. Holy fuck. Uh, I like nothing, not like just smoking and sleeping. So smoking could crack? Yeah, I smoke and crack. Yeah. And, and sleeping. Do you have a house? I don't know to have house. I have just one car, the franchise. Yeah, smoking crack. I am ready to get out of here. Ready to get out of here. <laughs>